Let's have a closer look at the parts of a lathe. The lathe bed, usually made of cast iron, it provides a heavy rigid frame on which all the main components are mounted. The headstock. It's mounted in a fixed position on the anyways, usually at the left hand end. The gearboxes are inside the headstock, providing a range of speeds which are selected by moving levers. The quick change gearbox controls the movement of the carriage using speed selection levers. The chuck, either three jaw self centering or four jaw independent to clamp the parts being machined. The carriage, it can be traversed along the bed either manually or automatically, carrying the cutting tool, the cross slide and the compound slide. The tailstock is used for mounting various hole cutting tools, drills and reamers or a machine centre to support a long workpiece. The headstock has two gearboxes. The upper one rotates a shaft called the spindle. The end of the spindle is usually machined to carry a faceplate, chuck or drive plate. In turn, these attachments hold the workpiece that is going to be machined. Every material has its own cutting speed. A large diameter workpiece is turned slower. A small diameter workpiece is turned faster. The speed the cutting tool moves across the workpiece is called the feed rate. This is controlled by the lower gearbox. A hard material has a slow feed rate and a soft material has a faster feed rate. The lathe has two finely machined slideways. The inner way carries the tailstock and the outer way carries the carriage. The carriage moves along the slideway and supports the cross slide, compound slide and the tool post. The tailstock is moved along the slideway and is locked in place when in use. The carriage can be moved manually both ways along the bed or it can be moved automatically by two shafts driven by the quick change gearbox. The upper shaft is the lead screw shaft used for thread cutting the other is the lay shaft which drives the gearbox in the carriage. A third shaft is the clutch shaft which engages the spindle and can also reverse the spindle rotation. It is operated by a lever on the carriage. The cross slide can be operated manually or automatically. The controls are located on the front face or apron of the carriage. The travel direction is chosen by pulling out the selector that disengages the carriage travel and engages the slide travel. The automatic cross slide travel is best used when facing off large diameters to produce a high quality surface finish. To allow the turner to cut to the correct depth a graduated collar is attached to the handwheel and this measures how far the tool has moved across the lathe bed. The collar can be moved independently to a reference mark so that accurate cuts may be produced. The 
compound slide rests on the cross slide and is moved manually in a similar manner to the cross slide. Its handwheel also has a graduated collar. The tool post is on top of the compound slide. It holds the tool holders that hold the cutting tools. The tool holder can hold a variety of different cutting tools. On this machine, the tool holder is held in place by using a cam lock. So that tapers may be cut, the compound slide may be turned to an angle across the bed. A graduated scale shows the angle and when in place the slide is locked down to prevent it slipping. To produce the taper, only the compound slide is used and it is operated manually. The tailstock slides along the bed and can be locked to it at a convenient point. The tailstock has a barrel that may be moved in and out using a graduated handwheel. The barrel has a Morse taper hole that grips various cutting tools such as drill bits, reamers, chucks and rotating centers. The depth of drilling can be measured using the graduations on the handwheel. There are two locking levers. One locks the tailstock to the bed, the other locks the barrel in the tailstock. 